T with Gary V. Michael, make a flip. Take a risk. May 4th in the building. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good morning, good afternoon if you are in Europe and beyond. Good morning, good very early morning, West Coast, you know, 6 a.m. crew. There's a lot of you. I appreciate that. Super excited to uh, be on the show. Hope everybody had a tremendous weekend. And this is Tea with Gary B. Dustin's on the ones and twos. Always appreciate my man. And let's uh, let's get right into it. Hi. Hi, Samantha. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Great. Thank you. So yeah. my question is, basically, I'm an artist. And a big part of what I do is web comics. Um, web comics, mostly about dating. I've built my audience on it. I've become known for it. And while I love creating that kind of content, I've been wanting to branch out and share art about other topics, like pieces of my life. But when I do that, my engagement totally plummets. So my question is, do I stick with what I'm known and loved for, or do I keep experimenting and branching out? Experimenting and branching out in perpetuity and making it a bigger mix of your content. Um, you know, I, basically completely reset in my career when I switched from Wine Library TV to, you know, making business videos. The, you know, the being a slave to engagement is a super sad existence. Yeah. I mean, just even the way you're asking the question, I'm like, you like watch, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, like there's, a, there's a under, you know, this is happening to everybody. It really happens to talented people that are making creative like yourself. It happens to people that love certain genres. It happens to people that grew up as comics or models, you know, cause they evolved. It happens to every child, you know, influencer that hits because who you are at nine is very different than who you are at 16. Um, yeah, I, I think you need a much healthier mix with, um, with what you want to put out. Be okay with the engagement drop because over a course of three to five years, you know, three to six months, you'll notice that you'll start building an audience for the other stuff. I mean, when I first started doing some of the flipping garage sale stuff, it didn't do well. Now it's my most performing content. Like my garage sale clips outperform my business stuff. You know, you know, I, uh, you might have noticed, uh, you know, at some point, if you've been following me, like a year and a half ago, I just started making cartoons about the things I believed in. That wasn't, you know, also at first did okay and then really got hot. So, you know, I think you really need to mix in stuff, including like, for example, I see the, the thing over your left shoulder, like that kind of design, like, you know, like including four of those in a row and then just a picture of you like drinking cocoa, you know, like it won't do as well because your main audience is there, but doing as well on social media can't come at the expense of who you want to be. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's super simple. I also want to talk to you about make, doing maybe a branded wine text comic with me. I would love to. Great. Hit up yeah. Dustin. Let's get it done. Absolutely. Awesome. Have yeah, a great nice day. Nice to meet you. You too. Nice to meet you too. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, just to build on that for everybody, like this is a common theme and I think you've seen it already even in the short time we've been doing tea with Gary Vee, like people have become absolute slaves to the engagement and social, to what my fans want. And, you know, there's that classic, you know, analogy of like, if I gave my customers what they wanted, I would have made a faster horse instead of a car. Like, I just really can't believe that, you know, I really want to inspire people to make sure they post what they want to post, even if it doesn't do as well. Photos with me and people, like, don't do as well, including like my family members, it just doesn't do as well. Um, but I want to share that. So share it. It's only one post. You know, to put it in a different way for everybody, just one post. The algorithm is not going to destroy you for it. It's just one post. No post is going to destroy you. Let's keep it going, especially if it's making you happy. Hey, Gary. Hey, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Hey, I'm just getting started here. I've worked with your team and made these Gary V Lego figures. And well, uh, your team is just so fantastic to work with, man. You've got the best of the best for you. Thank you. You bet. So my question is about side hustles. Um, I have lots of side hustles. I'm an entrepreneur myself. I'm a musician. I do the flip game, got my hands on lots of things. And the question is, how do you know when there are too many side hustles? Is there such a thing? And where do you cut slack? To me, once people understand that happiness is success, not financial is success, all of a sudden this question goes completely away. 
You know, sure. because people that have a ton of side hustles do it because they like it. You know, eight out of 10, two out of 10 think they're gonna find some sort of like passive income, like scheme that's gonna let them like lay on the beach and just make money. But most people that have a lot of things going on are just inherently creative and need the action. Absolutely, yeah. It's, you know, it's... a lot of people, a lot of people are like, wow, Gary B, you're so nice. You're helping your dad so much with wine text, Dustin. You know, like super cool. But the reality is I need wine text as much as wine text and my dad needs me. Right. I need that right. creative outlet. Like we sent out an email this morning to a big three hundred thousand person wine list and like I couldn't wait to wake up and see what the numbers look like. You know, and so like, you know, what I, I really believe that creative people need a lot of things. And you know, it may not maximize your financial impact. It does for me because things like wine techs allow me to stay focused on Vayner Media. But for some people, they may never find massive financial success, but they'll be happy like playing music, flipping stuff, building Legos, like like happiness, Jonathan, right? Like, you sure. know, and I, th I think if you can make one of those things your 80%, you can then flirt with the 20% to keep you kind of, creatively happy you absolutely know, i had 70, a mentor that maybe said that exactly, 70 yeah. yeah maybe 70 30 but but after that it can get too too spread thing there's um there's a great football you know analogy of like if you have two quarterbacks you have none there's a great russian saying that basically translates to you can't have your ass on two toilets at the same time you know, so there, there is the extreme. This is all balance, but I do think 70, 30, 80, 20. And for everybody listening, if your core business is 70% of your time, 80% of your time, I think you can get away. I, I believe that I'm a person that is better at my 80% thing, VaynerMedia, because of Vayner Sports, because of Wine Text, because of Empathy, because of the case with Steel, because of Gary V, you know, da, 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 da. So, I think that my 80 acts like 110 instead of my 100 acting like 90. So I think some, sure. for a lot of us, we need the side hustles to make our core thing go better. Absolutely. Yeah, that's well said. I love it. You got it, brother. Take care. Awesome. Thanks. You too. Appreciate it. Good morning, Jess Murphy. Good morning, Melissa A. Jesus Rios. What's good, brother? Just a 11 things, Jari Young, good morning. Jari Young, I don't see you signed up for wine text and neither you, Bradley Wood. Jari Young, Bradley Wood, I need to, you need to reply right now with you're signed up or not signed up or if you live in one of those bullshit states that we can't ship to and Dustin's gonna put you up when you reply. Let's keep this going. Hey, Eric. Hey, is this the uh, Dr. Gary V show? It sure is, sir. You're, you're going to give uh, Dr. Phil a run for his money, I think. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you, my friend. How are things? I love you. I love, I love you. you. Everything's Thanks. good. Here, here's the deal. Uh, here's the question. How can I turn what is usually a one-time business into a lifetime customer? And here, here's my business. Wedding florist. Uh, family started over 100 years ago in Detroit. My grandfather. Um, first family business was built uh, right at the close of World War II. Family still owns it. I moved out to Southern California. Uh, I've been here since 15 years. Most of my business comes from bridal expos and my relationship with the venues where I've got about 10 venues that I'm a preferred vendor. So that's where most of my business comes. But usually I see that bride one time through the course of maybe six months to a year. I may hear from a, a, a bridesmaid a year later or a sister to do another wedding, but then that's it. So I, I'm, I'm doing both flowers and also I'm, a, I'm an officiant. I'm a, I'm a licensed minister. So I probably do, like this year already, I've, I've booked, uh, even with COVID-19, I booked about 40 weddings for this year, this time, and I have another 10 next year already booked and I'll probably do about two efficient services. When I meet with the bride, she needs a minister. I offer that as a service as well. And then I probably do about two to three a month. But I'd like to somehow see, you know, when that once that wedding's over, I rarely hear from them again. And I don't know really what service to offer them. It's funny, it's so, funny you say this. I've been thinking about this exact business, believe it or not. So you said flowers, right? Yes, wedding flowers, specialist. Makes sense. Do you know, I've been thinking a lot about what the top of the funnel for acquisition is for a man buying flowers for his 
wife for Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, birthday. And I've always thought, wow, the wedding industry really fucked this up. The flowers people, obviously a 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, $100,000 flower execution at a wedding is very different than a $300 bouquet. However, you know, if you think of the typical guy, which is a big audience, if the person that's doing flowers for the wedding literally just looked over at the other person at the wedding, which is the guy, which, you know, which eight out of 10 times, I'm sure is six out of 10 times is not involved intimately on the flower part and said, hey buddy, do you wanna order a subscription for me that automatically sends your wife flowers on whatever three or four key occasions anniversary, like there's four times a year between anniversary yeah. and Valentine's, eventually Mother's Day, if they go that route and birthday. Yeah. I, I've been fascinated by leaving that free business on the table, even if you took a referral fee and outsourced it to somebody who did small uh, things instead of big things. Got it? There, even there you go. You, got it? Even if you took 50% yeah. of the, if you roll up on any local floors and said, look, I'll, let's split it 50, 50. I'm gonna bring you the customer. You know how much advertising yeah. costs. Uh, I want fifty percent of the profit, but I yeah. I'm there. I'm in the acquisition place. I mean, it's by the way back to you know bro- sisters and things like. I think there's a massive flower subscription business wow. on the back of florists and subscription, not one time. Yeah. I mean, look, Cal- Calvin Knight in the comments. This is genius. I just may do that myself. Guys don't want to think about this shit. Yeah. We suck. I- yeah. So if you told me four times a year you're gonna bang me for three hundred bucks, or you know, if somebody's fifty bucks, or whatever the number is, I'm thrilled. Yeah. That's the greatest. Yeah. That's more exciting than the fucking wedding. Yeah, because now you're a good guy. Your wife's gonna love you, or your family's gonna love you. Your mom, whatever you. That's great. I and per normal wedding, you're probably gonna, you know, inevitably half the groomsmen or the father are married and you like, there's just, an, there's probably three, it's not one. I, I think if you really play it hard and don't, don't uh-huh. come off super douchey, but you come off communicative, you're probably signing up three to five subscriptions wow. at a time. You know, that adds up. You said 40? Yeah, I do right now. And that's just right now. I mean, that's, that's just here we are April. And I had that even last month because of COVID-19, I've had to reschedule a lot of weddings. So I'm kind of, open right now but yeah I, I should probably double that by the end of the year i mean you talk about 80 you talk about two people on average one sometimes one sometimes zero sometimes five depending on the wedding party that co- sign up for that subscription let's just call it 160 people four times a year on some, it's it's recurring you might keep you you want you asked me how do i keep a customer or create a more than one time i'm showing you a way to hit them four times a yeah. year in perpetuity that sounds great and I like that because as a, as a, uh, a floral specialist, wedding specialist, I'm not your normal retail store. So I order flowers, bring them to my home studio. Okay. I design everything here. So I don't always have flowers in the cooler like a regular retail. Correct. But if I develop a relationship with the retail business, or, uh, that would be awesome. Or, or, Eric, at scale, you eventually realize that you're, besides birthdays and wedding, I mean, there's two times a year that you could do it yourself. Mother's yeah. Day and you know, and Valentine's right. Day, you you could control that and keep all the margin because once you get the scale and have a thousand people on your subscription, now you have enough scale to buy both. You yeah. see where I'm going? Right. right. As long as it was a, as long as it was local, because I'm from the Southern California Temecula area. Because a lot of brides they'll fly in, right? They'll do destination weddings. Yeah, but, but so, honestly, but, but, if you're outsourcing the fulfillment, you don't yeah. need to be local. What you need to do is spend a good couple months on finding 50 to 500 partners to be the execution and you keep a margin on top oh, of the boy. execution. See where oh, I'm going? Even, yeah, but, even outside of the, yeah, I got you now. All, <laughs> you know, literally Rick from Bernardsville, New Jersey flies in for that destination wedding. He's like, hey, I'm pumped about this. You literally go to Google and type in Bernardsville or, or, or Sussex mm-hmm. County, New Jersey florist. You call five of them, four or lazy and don't give a fuck the fifth one's like hell yeah i'll take the free money you cut the deal and away you go all the orders go through you so they don't go around you i love it that's a great idea that's great well listen you didn't keep me around for nothing eric you don't watch this shit for my looks i promise you that (laughs) thank you i really love you man i I love your content you're you're a blessing brother thank you man. man
Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You too. Some people just got it like that. Listen, some people can score 45 in a big playoff game. Some people can sing the national anthem and make you cry. Other people can come up with business ideas. Like <laughs> Repetition. This is what happens when you do and think and live this for fucking 37 straight years every second of your life. This is what happens when it's your ethos. Let's keep it going. Hey, Gary, how's it going? I'm well, Benner. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, so a little about myself. Um, I spent about seven years in the military uh, after sp- <laughs> thanks. Um, and I later transitioned out. Um, and now I'm going to college for professional and technical communications. Um, I have about three years left. And a lot of my gears, and a lot of my drive is turning towards the social media communications aspect of what's going on around in the world. And kind of my question right now is how can I become a more respectable person in that industry? Meaning, meaning, why do you want to be respected? Let's play because I think you'll see where I'm going. So why do I want to be respected? Because I want to be able to work with small clients, large clients, and also with, you know, people that I can help. I want to be able to help right. others and help people. You want to grow. build your business and you think the reputation exactly. matters. Yes. So if I think that's right. I just wanted to hear you say it. I think the way you do it is you do three to five things and services and deals for free in return for the endorsement and the reviews on Yelp or Google reviews or you know wherever that may sit. And I think you only do it for free with people that bring you the most value for their voice, right? So you okay. don't just do it for somebody nobody's ever heard of because you know Karen from Temecula, you can just, you know it's not gonna drive you through the roof. So I think doing free work for people that have clout, that their endorsement on your website or your social, you know, if, if someone lands on your social media and the profile says, you know, Oprah says, you know, Benner's fucking amazing at Snapchat, quote unquote, mm-hmm. that's going to fucking matter. Yeah, I agree. And I have, and it's something that I'm trying to build, of course, as you, and as you said, I'm seriously writing this down because I have that mindset that if I don't write it down, it'll be gone forever. Um, um, and I'm also trying to create Res- a podcast. Respect, respect, respect is earned. Yes. Respect and is it, earned. Right. It's, so it's like hard. we have, we have a huge lead right now for VaynerMedia. Why? Because the, person hired somebody and that person said, I worked with Vayner in the past and they're awesome. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's just through reps. The problem is when you're at zero, for example, speaking, mm-hmm. you know, my first speaking gig was paid for cause I didn't even know it existed public speaking. But after that I did about eight to 12 to 15 for free because I wanted to get the reps. I yeah. paid for my travel. I, everyone's like, Gary, I want to be a motivational speaker. I'm like, well, I'm not a motivational speaker. First, I always play that game with them. But I'm like, look, if you want to be a public speaker, one of the best ways to do that is to speak for free at first. It's Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock and Eddie Murphy played fucking shit clubs for $2 or a free beer mm-hmm. or free because he needed the reps. You know, you know, Taylor Swift played the fucking local you know, thing at 14 years old for free. Like everyone's like, I just don't understand how people don't understand this. Like, you need to know your worth. Don't do shit for free. Only said by people who aren't winning. Like, yeah. like you know, do some work for free to get the to get the quotes, to get the reputation. Okay. The problem is the, the most people that don't want to do it for free realize that their work's not good enough to create word of mouth. If you actually believed you were great, you would always do shit for free. I always do shit for free because I know exactly mm. what happens after the fact. It's true. That's why we're doing this, right? <laughs> That's right. Got Alrighty, it. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank free you, Gary, so quotes. much. Free work quotes. Uh, you know, listen, if somebody's willing to pay you, great. But at first, yeah. it's hard. You know, going from zero to one is hard. Free is usually the unlock. It's a dirty word to a lot. Not to me. Okay. Absolutely, right. Gary. Thank you so much. Talk to you. you got it, brother. Bye. And by the way, for everybody who's going to go down the free path, if you just got inspired, get prepared to get screwed. You do a bunch of good work for somebody and they're like, they don't like the work and they don't give you a quote. And then you're like, fuck, Gary fucked me up. I thought I was going to get the quote from this. You have to realize that one or two quotes makes up for the six people that fuck you. If you're in business, you got to get ready to be fucked. Look at this deer. The deer knows. Deer's eating that shit for free. Free works.
in nature and in business. All right, let's keep it going. Hi, Jessica. Hey, hey. How are I'm you? I'm so excited I'm in a marathon after this, just an FYI. Love. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, hello. First, I just wanted to, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, first thing, I just wanted to say thank you for everything you do. We know that the online space is kind of the wild, wild west. So good people that are really bringing knowledge is an A-okay in my book. Thank you. For my question, it's it's a little thing, um, which is why I wanted to bring it here. And that is the fact that I have been in business for about eight years now. And I have been fortunate in businesses in different industries online. And I keep running into the same issue where I know vision. Dustin, let's get this reset. Can't wait to get Jessica back. She's awesome, but let's get a reset. Businesses. Thank you. Uh, let me say hello while Dustin gets set up. Uh, Boxy Nerd, always great to see you. Thank you for always being here. Gabrielle Rodriguez, I appreciate you back. D Nation, what is good? Um, dirty tea, I do like the dirty tea t-shirt. I do like that. Um, real quick, uh, winetext.com today, huge offer, Chardonnay. It is summer season. If, uh, if you're on the East Coast, this uh, weekend was amazing. Really excited about today. Uh, big time, big time Chardonnay, white burgundy. Big time white burgundy, monster score. Forbes magazine went nuts for it. It's going to be a big, 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 big offer. A lot of you are not drinking enough white wine uh, and a lot of you have been asking me. Really today's wine is because I'm listening to the streets. Uh, tons of red wine offerings. People have been complaining. That's the only way to put it. So monster red, like monster white wine offering today. Let's keep it going. Oh, Jess. Are we back? We're, We're back. back. All right. We're back. Um, so my four businesses, four businesses, you always come into the same place, which is um having a bigger vision, but at the same time, it's one of those things that to accomplish the vision is gonna take work. And even if it takes five or ten years, it puts me in the fear of success with it of okay, if it works. Now what? Now I would be like close to 40 and I achieve like the thing I put on the pedestal this whole time or the fear of failure where if you do this one thing doesn't mean it's going to work like everything else. And if you really lean into that and go forward with it and it doesn't work like, holy crap. So it's like, I don't. So put people let's let's. On yeah, I got it. Decision. Yeah. No, no, actually, you are putting people on a pedestal. You're, because what you're worried about is the judgment when it loses. Pretty much. Yeah, you actually are putting people on a pedestal. So it's like I find. That do you have a Do you have a Do you have a good Do you have a good sense of whose opinion you most worry about? Like who would be like, oh, you suck. Like when I say like the person who says like you're a failure, or you lost, or I'm disappointed in you. Like who comes up first? Um, uh, probably like parent type of situation, which is weird. Cause I do, I've done everything the opposite of what I was supposed to do already. So it's like, you already kind of just did your own thing regardless. So that's good. That means you're, you're super close. That means you just need to realize you're still there just cause you did 18 things the other way. This 19 thing is fucking you up. Listen, I, I I've been very consistent with this and I think you know this. I'm obsessed with people falling in love with losing pushback, negativity, the dirt, all of it. Cause it works. Because once you're not, that means you're not scared. This is one humongous game of fear. But it doesn't show in anything else. Like I lose all the time in business. Like it's just normal. You put something out, you're like, oh, try again. Like do something uh, different. I, so I, I, I had no fear in life, but I was scared to kiss girls in like junior high and high school. Like, great. I'm sure you, like things pop up in lots of places. Like I'm with you, like lots of, you know, I'm insane in sports. Like I punched my brother. I want to hurt, literally, literally want to hurt people. Literally my hope when I play sports against people is they become injured. 
like I'm being really serious with you, like in my brain, in that moment, in that context, I desperately want that person to be hurt in life. <laughs> that is not who I am in real life. Of course it doesn't show up in other places. We act different in different circumstances. The end. There are people who have shit parents who are then remarkable parents, vice versa. You know, people who have incredible work ethic at work who can't spend two minutes putting up a sign in a building. You know, like, like of course it doesn't show up in the other places. Mm-hmm. And I That's guess exactly I, I like lean on the fact of, you know exactly what to do as far as like, okay, launch this podcast, do this, like build the audience. It's not gonna happen overnight. And then no matter what, it's like lean back to all the things that are comfortable in building it. Judgment. People are worried about judgment. Mm -hmm. People put other people's opinions on pedestals over their own happiness. So do the thing. Because what (laughs) ends up happening is regret. Mm -hmm. And regret sucks shit. And, And then lack of accountability. Now you're moping around your 60s, 70s, and 80s, and you're bitter. And you're blaming everybody but yourself. Yeah. And then parents die and you're sitting there for another 25 years and just, it's just what I don't want for people. It's a trap. The number one thing that everybody can do for their parents and themselves is to live their life on their own two feet and on their own decisions. So, would you say my best option in this is like the topics I want to talk about? Cause I've like trickled them into bit, like anything that's a personal brand, I can trickle it in cause it's about mental health and um, topics like that. Uh, and they do well, like it, all the signs are there as far as leading sure. that way. Um, yes, Dustin, if oh, go, I, ahead. go ahead, Jess. Oh, I was going to say, if I should just like throw myself in the water, so to speak of just like, you know what, for 30 days, just talk about, all yes. the shit you think people are going to judge you yes. on just to show yourself I, that you're not going to die. Like you'll- I, was, I was scared to ride a bike because I didn't want to skid my knees. And then I did. I was scared to swim. I didn't swim until I was like nine or something like that. And then I just jumped in the pool because my sister started swimming and that was unacceptable that my younger sister started before me. Like, yes, everything's scary until it's not. Mm-hmm. It's all boogie monsters. It's all fake. <laughs> it's all fucking fake. They're all under the bed. It's all What's fake. That? It's all fake. Just go do. Got it. Over and over. And over. question for you: Is there any chance? Of, I'm in Connecticut. Um, is there any chance of coming in and seeing your like shadowing your marketing team for the day, and then I'm happy to do work for another day as like a um, as a trade? Um, yeah. Back. Why don't what you don't need to give back, uh, but you can definitely hit up Dustin right now, and we'll set up a you, three four hour. Yes, you can. You can shadow for the day once that day comes. Who knows? That might be early yeah, next year when we're we... back. But I'm 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 for it. You got it, Jess. You ask, you get. Done. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Big ups, swing for the ring. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here with us, Sam Space eighty one, Karen Carrington. It really is true, Karen. Everything is scary until it's not. Like it's just really real. Let's keep it going. Hey, Megan. Hi, Gary. How are you? Good, good. Um, First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for everything you're doing. I've been listening to you for a while. Like, you really changed my life. You bring so much positivity. So I just, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate everything. You're welcome. So uh, let me just give you a little bit of a background. Um, I'm an ER physician, but I'm also a photographer. Uh, I've been doing photography, actually, since med school, which is ironic. Um, a little bit, but um, it's mostly travel stuff. Um, I started a travel blog maybe three or four years ago. Um, and then over the past two years, I've had some successes. You know, I've been part of some galleries, some shows, things like that. Um, so it's been great. But really, when, when COVID started, um, I began to document like my journey as an ER physician and a photographer on the front lines, I've been putting it up on the blog. And for the first time ever, um, I got some 
um, like uh, traction on my work, you know, people interested, um, like people reaching out to me, bloggers and um, podcasters and things like that. So I've, I'm very grateful for that. I've been kind of riding this wave um, of success. But my question is really, you know, I want to reach out more um, and kind of present this project and put it out there. But my question is, you know, I know you always talk about bring value. And I feel as a photographer, as a creator, sometimes it's really hard to, you know, reach out and don't look like you're just pushing your content. I want to be able to provide value, but I just don't know how to do it in terms well, of, you know, other when than you, the work itself being. Well, the, the work itself is the value. If you're asking when you're reaching out, you know, there's a couple ways. It depends on who you're reaching out to for what. Yeah. I mean, you're more than welcome to reach out to people you admire or want to do business with and say, hey, I want to give you, I want to, you know, I'd love to do some photography for free. Let me, you know, let me know if you're interested. Here's some, check out my profile for work. I mean, that's immediate value that you're bringing. Now I get asked 50 to 500 times a day for people to do free work and 99.9999% of the time I say no because when you're in a place where people want to get access or something from you, they're gonna offer that and eventually it doesn't become as valuable. You know, when DRock offered to do a free film, it was super valuable to me. Now there's 5,000 of those, it's just supply and demand and that's okay. Um, but there's plenty of people who will take you up on it. And I, I, I think asking is okay. Sometimes people blend my advice or it's not, I don't even think I give advice to be frank. It's funny, even the way that just came out, I don't like it. I think people blend my thoughts, my hypotheses, my opinions um, and think it's absolute every time. It's actually why I wrote Jab, 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 Right Hook. You know, it's sometimes it's okay to ask. You know, not in, you don't need to blend it every time. Sure. And the value is the work. So, and you could always offer to do some work for free. Yeah, I guess just like, I always wonder because I feel like, you know, with the type of photography that I do, it's more, I don't know if I would call it like, you know, documentary or whatever. Um, you know, it's, I always just felt but like we, it's- I, 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 I understand where you're going with the content. Like it makes sense to me, especially if you're talking about frontline where like those are gonna be like emotional pictures of people in moments that right. capture, I, that photography is well established. We all know that photography. Um, I guess the question is what would be your dream scenario? doing photography full time and sustaining your life, I assume, right? Um, I'm not really sure, you know, kind of, I think be, being a physician is part of your identity after you've been through so much. So I think in the end, I, I you know, I, I do want to keep doing that. You know, before, before the whole COVID thing started, when I never really blended the two, it was yeah. always like, you know, oh, I, I could do uh, something on the side, yep. like workshops and things like that. And, and now do you think you can blend the two in perpetuity? Or do you think this is a moment in time? You know, it's funny you ask that because I started to think about that um, the other day. I was like, you know, because obviously the pandemic, it's not going to last forever. Um, but I did start thinking about it. I was like, you know, this is something that I could actually continue doing. I think so too. I think so too. And, you know, just like firefighters, you know, after 9-11, you know, I think this has been, you know, so much devastation from this, but one of the great things is the appreciation level for nurses and physicians and doctors will, will now never be the same for the next 20 years minimally. There's so much gratitude, collective gratitude for the, the men and women and heroes that are at the front lines of this enormously difficult pandemic. And so I think that because of that, that even gives you more permission to keep going with this. You know, I, I think that, if I'm you, I'm putting out your work everywhere. So it's not just Instagram. I be you have a Pinterest account, post it there. Twitter, Facebook, making collages against popular songs on TikTok. I think you need to put yourself in a position the same way that people are reaching out to you right now off of a small exposure base. You can make one collage against one epic song that's popping on TikTok right now and it could catch 4 million views, the right 13 views, and then it might give you the leverage to do it forever. I see. Okay. You got to really strike during this time. This is the highest emotion against those photos. So you need to be everywhere and you need to, like every photo you took, I, you know, I know you're probably like every other artist. Oh, this one's not as good. This one's not as good. I want all of them out. All of them. <laughs> Maybe you save the best ones in your opinion for your Instagram feed, but everywhere else, stories, Facebook, Twitter, every piece of content goes out. The photo that you think is mundane might be the photo that changes your life. 
I, it's yeah that's exactly how you say it actually we're, we're very self-critical in, in general so insane yeah absolutely All right. good luck thank you bye, so man. much Gary. you're I welcome really appreciate it. happy bye. to do it bye-bye bye. you know and that advice is for everybody it's universal like saying no for the audience is the greatest mistake that creators make it's their own insecurities manifesting. I love perfectionists. Gary, you don't get it, I need to be perfect. You mean you're scared? Let's keep it going. Hey, Ernie, Gary. what's good? How are you? What's up, man? I'm good, how are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me on the show. I love the content that you put out, and um, yeah, just thanks for everything that you do for us. Thanks, uh, Coach. Where, where are you from? I'm, I'm in Austin, Texas right now. Um, so a little, a little backstory, I uh, have pretty much played at the high, high level of basketball my whole life, uh, women's basketball, um, played in Oklahoma, best player in Oklahoma, McDonald's All-American, played wow. here at UT, uh, University of Texas, wow. seven years, seven years uh, overseas. So I, I am trying, I, I want to be happy, I want to do what makes me happy, so I would love nothing more <clears throat> than to build a career as a, a skill coach, working with AAU teams, working with big camps, um, yep. being a, a newbie electrotherapist that helps uh, accelerate injuries pretty Love. fast, being a speaker and a mentor to young athletes, um, especially female athletes, just because I, I, I think I relate to them more. It's your, yeah, of course, it's athletes, a jam. I love them. Um, I'm struggling to figure out how to build traction and um, brand, I guess, of, of my sports training business to um, to get, I got to you. get started. I got you. It's the same old thing. It's no different than the gentleman a couple of uh, calls ago. I think, you know, given your relationships, I'm sure there's teammates that went on to the WNBA or coaches that went to this or that and this. You've right. got a Rolodex. You know, McDonald's All-American. You've right. got relationships. You've got, you've got relationships. I think... Again, I think you go and document, you know, once we get back to some normalcy, mm -hmm. I think I think you hit up every fucking person you know and you offer your services for free at a camp or minimum wage or be an intern. Okay. You being an intern at at you know at you know the uh, Connecticut coaches, Gino's camp, right? Let's say he has a camp. I don't I don't know, but you being an intern there and you get you would pay him in my mind, you should pay him for the ability to make all that content right. that's co-signing against the best program in the nation, which you then post everywhere, just like the last woman. Mm -hmm. You know how this works. One high and especially off the devastating tragedy of Gigi and Kobe's passing. Like mm -hmm. there's so much more attention to young women's basketball right now, right? right. And just like all you need is one one high net worth individual to like to hire you to have you train their daughter to you know like st want to start a business with you this is all about content across mm -hmm. all the platforms that leads to business development you are one epic tiktok video away from everything you want yet i say it every morning every afternoon every evening and when you're so lucky to have something like basketball skills, which is so visual mm -hmm. for the world we now live in, like the shit I do is not visual. I have to articulate it. You know, business operations isn't visual. Right. You know, making a full court shot that gets 40 million views on TikTok is real. <laughs> you, you're, you're gifted. You have the best platform off the most cultural thing. Basketball, women's, like Jesus, like you're sit, like you couldn't have picked a better time to be alive. I just need you to put out forty pieces of content a day, and ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people aren't even close. They just can't get there. Okay, but it will lead to everything you want. You put your email. You put your email in your all your accounts. And shit will just happen if you make 40 to 50 fucking videos and pictures a day. Three for TikTok, three main posts, four main posts on Instagram, 13 stories, five tweets. Like this is real shit, coach. Okay. Like, like back, you know what's so funny? I love talking to coaches and like people that know their craft. 
you know, like, you know, like inevitably a niece or somebody that you know is gonna be 11 and is gonna be like, I'm gonna be in the WNBA and you know she's fucking not working. Mm-hmm. You know she's not out. You already know she's finished. Right. <laughs> That's how I view this with content. Okay. Like, it's simple. My little guy loves basketball. He's about to turn eight. All I'm doing is making him work with his left hand. And like, yeah, and like, I know that's going to pay dividends. I also know his genetics aren't sending him anywhere close to the NBA. <laughs> but he's going to hurt some people and pick up basketball. And he's going to be happy that left was developed. That's the work. Yeah. The Euro step that he does perfectly, which is, blows my mind, is the work. Mm-hmm. Okay. You need to do the work on the content. You're literally one piece of content away from everything you want to happen. Okay. Awesome. It's real. So you got to make content about, you know, here's here, everything you know. Number one mistake with the pay, way people hold the basketball. 50 different pieces of content about left hands for righties. 50. Like if you got a daughter that you want to be in the WNBA and she's three and you're not tying her right hand behind her back, you mm-hmm. fucked up. That's mm-hmm. the video that could change your life. You understand? Yeah. 100, 500 free throws a day. What? 500 free throws a day. And then you go outside, set up your phone. You don't have a D-Rock. And take 500 fucking free throws. And then you come home and you Google, how do I edit a video? And then you fucking speed it up so it doesn't take fucking forever because 500 is going to take a minute. And now you got a video of you putting 500 fucking free throws for two minutes and 30 seconds against a Roddy Rich song that fucking goes. Okay. The work. Yeah. The, you know, 90% of the people don't post, post the content that I want because they're insecure and they're worried about judgment. But another 90% overlaid over that, not in addition because there's only 100%, they don't do it because they don't actually want to put in the work. Mm-hmm. It's fucking work. I think it's, I think it's the fear for me. Like for, for, for the last couple of years, it's, I've been on and off with the content and thinking about it too much. Too much. And- I, I, I'm to the point where I'm like, whatever. I just want to, I want to be consistent and put it out and stop worrying about what people think. Correct. Who cares if you have four followers? Who cares that you got one like? We all did at first. Yeah. And when they come at you, you're like, what did you do? Fuck you. Like what? What's your <laughs> handle? Because a lot of people are asking, what's your handle? At eHoops Performance. So E-H. Yep. eHoops. Kind of like the shirt mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. eHoops Performance on Instagram. Um, YouTube at uh, Coach Ernie Williams. Have you thought about Coach Ernie Williams for for Instagram? No. I think people relate more with humans. Okay. I'd rather you, you know, I, I think you should change it to, okay. to you and then just put the at Hoops Performance in your bio so it's link outable. I think that would be a better structure. People connect more with humans. I believe that high net worth woman, man is going to hire you or give you that break more because it's you, the human than e-hoops performance. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And the the other thing that lets you do is like, it lets you make a video of you having a a slurpee and then telling the kids like, yo, you don't have to fucking be perfect every minute. This fucking little slushy fucking helped me. Cause it gave me, you know, like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like it lets you be more human. Okay. I like that. Thank you. It opens up more content. You're welcome. Okay. Good Thanks, luck. Gary. Thank you TikTok. so much. TikTok. Ernie, TikTok. I'm how, telling you. How would you how would you suggest to uh to put content on, on TikTok? Go because, on TikTok, type okay. in basketball and search, watch 550 videos over two hours, and start making content. Okay. It fucking kills on TikTok. I'm gonna do it. And I'll do, do it. And do and do like some women empowerment shit. Like get one of your like you know, brothers, best friends, a guy, and let, and play him one on one and fucking destroy him. Chop up that video, and like that shit will kill. That's the that's what's gonna hit. Ernie, people don't get how much better. Like guys are delusional. Guys are fucking stupid. Guys don't realize they can't beat an all uh, fucking McDonald's all American in one on one. They think they can because they're on that bullshit guy girl things. You would fucking destroy every friend I've got. You know what I mean? Put yeah. that shit out. That will okay. get women like move like that's the fucking good <laughs> shit, you know? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gary. You got it. Man, some good stuff. I think that helped a lot of people. That, you know, was niche to her, but I think a lot of you needed to hear that. Let's keep it going. Hey, Gary. Hi, Ginger. How are you? I'm well. How are you? 
super nervous because Don't be. obviously I'm a huge fan and I'm all over your social media. Um, a huge supporter and um, I just can't thank you enough. I love your team. I love your community, your Twitter community. Big ups to everybody on Twitter. I love um, it. <laughs> I am. So my question first is how do I go deeper, but also wider on my Instagram after already experiencing some success. Um, can you hear me okay? Very well. Okay. My, my ear just stitched. Okay. Um, so long story, bad story. Um, so I do pharmaceutical sales uh, by day and um, I've been doing it for a very long time. I have done more cold calls than anybody on earth. I'm <laughs> Um, I really love talking to people. Um, and so six years ago, I decided I had a child. I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick up a camera. I'm going to learn photography. It became very simple for me um, or very basic, you know, just learning how to use a camera. Um, I started doing it every single day. I became obsessed with my craft. I learned how to do it um, very well. Long story short, got into kids fashion. Um started blogging for a magazine and started, you know, just getting noticed and it felt really good. It's like, wow, I'm doing good in my craft. Um, and eventually that helped me learn how to study what people want and study brands and really zone in on, you know, how to, um, how to, how to attention have basically, which is great. Right. Um, so I've been doing that. Um, but I don't know how to kind of build on that. Um, Meaning, how do you define building? More attention hacking so you get more awareness or convert it into something? How do you I define wanna, build? I wanna convert it into something. Um, well, what do you wanna sell? That's the thing, I don't, I don't know. I don't wanna- Well, good, so don't, I'm don't happy. sell. Yeah, don't I'm sell, un, yeah, don't sell until you have something to sell. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, re I'm honestly really happy with what I'm doing. I love, again, I love the community. I love the people. I'm obsessed with, with connecting and. I see it. I see it in my Twitter. I see it. Yeah. That's that's like, good. Me too. I had a wine store that I was focused on when I was building my six years of connecting, asking for nothing. First time I, it took me years before there was anything I asked for, and that was an eleven dollar book called Crush It, which oh by the way, fucking changed unlimited people's lives because they learn from reading unlike me. And so yeah. like, like you know this because we, we engage so much, like, like I'm super proud of wine text. It's literally the best way to buy wine in America. I really genuinely believe that. It's super fun when you have something to sell, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like Empathy Wines is literally the best $20 wine. I really believe that. I like, you know, I really feel, feel great about that. Yeah, and it, it, there's there's no pressure because you don't, like where I'm at, I'm having, I'm honestly having so much fun because it's almost like a challenge. Like, okay, who can I hack? And like, I have to say it, but when last year, Will Smith reposted one of my photos, which I was blown away because who does that? Um, cool. Even you, you reposted one of my photos and you know, it's just, it's, it, it, the validation of just, and, and it's you, not about feeling teacher, like, teacher, oh. you're you're a salesperson. Yeah. You love the I game. Do. I do. That's I do. amazing, me too. I under, Do you understand how happy I get when I find a $12 mug at a garage sale for 25 cents? It's more exciting for me than landing a $5 million deal for VaynerMedia. I swear on the Jets, my children, and everything that I hold. <laughs> it, it, my chemicals are more excited. Yeah. You like the idea of strategy of how am I gonna get Will Smith and Gary to retweet? You like that. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. That's amazing. You love your process. It's probably why you're so successful at pharmaceutical sales. You love your process. Yeah, I do. If, I don't think you have to have a right hook from social. I also think you're an extremely young woman who may decide to start a raspberry farm in 17 <laughs> years and then that's what it converts into. Yeah. Well, you're nine months older than me, so technically, I'm I'm just making you my brother, and we have both have twins, or we both so, have uh, double, double, double. Listen family. to me, you can't Ginger. Listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> We're extremely young. Yeah. 
in 17 years, we're fucking 61. Like, I just, I don't know how people don't understand that. Like, I'm gonna be fucking hustling my face off at 78. I'm gonna be making empires at 70. I'm gonna be winning Super Bowls. I'm gonna be, you know, buying countries and changing the name. Like, I'm fucking going for it. Like, what are we doing here? I know. And I, and I want to encourage people, like, you know, when you're scrolling on social media and you kind of just see the same, like, you know, it, it, I want more. I, I don't want to just take, so take more and be like, oh, here, this is what I did because I feel like I'm excluding people. I don't want people to feel like, oh, look what she did. And how am I supposed to live up to that? I had no, I worked from Ginger, Ginger, up. Ginger, Ginger, don't even take yourself that serious. Okay. Yeah. Humility is the unlock here. Good news, nobody's, nobody's thinking that about you. When you realize you're the most special and you're not special at all, shit gets really good. Yeah. Don't let your ego have that combo with you. You're Nobody right. gives a fuck about you, Ginger. You're right, no, you're right. Seriously. Yeah, I've been, the fuck? I, I've been feeling that. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the freedom, that's, that's where it takes you once you realize 100%. That. Like, don't have that combo with you. Live up to you. It's, that's a piece of cake for millions and it's impossible for other millions. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Don't go into that game. So, I mean. I, I, Ginger, I, guess, I, think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna win the whole fucking thing and I still know that nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. I know, I'm with you. Okay, with, I, so good news. I, I, have, I have that sense of, knowing as well there's something deep down there and i want to drag it out and i don't and i'm process happy. process I'm, Pro I'm patience just keep going just keep experimenting just keep putting myself out there and seeing where it what ends up happening ginger if we have a lot of similarities i think we do like you start becoming better at giving yeah i need this hour every morning i got a lot of shit going on yeah but but i've gotten to practice of giving so i need to do this you know, it just becomes your, it, it almost becomes like brushing your teeth and taking a shower. Yeah. Second nature. Yeah, it's a part Second of you. Second nature. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's super fun to like realize you're doing something well. And like people are, you know, when you came on here, a ton of people in the community were like, yay. yay. But, just, but just, just remember, if you ground yourself in like that one little insight to like, how are they going to live up to it? You're, you're misplaying that. You're listening to a couple of people's feedback and more importantly, you're allowing yourself to put yourself on a pedestal and that becomes a vulnerability. Yeah, I put a lot of pressure on myself. I think I try to build on where I've gotten, you know, myself and then, I, and then I'm like, well, okay. You, now, Ginger, now. You're, you're, at, you're at your best when you like the process. Yeah. You just I, are lucky the way I'm lucky and there's nothing else to say than luck that the process of, making the deal or closing the thing mm. is the process we like. A lot of people hate that process. So our process happens to have financial success behind it, but that's a very different thing than happiness. Yeah. And so you need to realize it is that process that you love and then that puts you in a really good spot. My process is I've found a love for promoting people. I call myself a connector because I have found the most success is when I connect with someone that connects to somebody else and when i put them both together not by my doing but because of like you call serendipity things happen magic happens to get good in there. good good leads to good bad leads to bad yeah people in this comment section right now some of them are really good and good things will happen some yeah. of them are not as good and bad things will happen life is simple yeah like Super fucking no, simple. It's, it's cynicism, all about the heart. cynicism, anger, negativity has at times short term success, which always falls apart like a cheap fucking chair. It's hard to be good and optimistic and positive. It is. It's easy. It's easy to be yeah. cynical and negative and dark. That's a piece of fucking cake. Mm -hmm. That person's soft, simple, soft, fucking soft. It's hard to be good. Yeah, it is. Cool. See ya. But I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You got it. Take care. You take care. Dustin. Yes, sir. Uh, 
let's do some PSAs. There was a lot of new people in here. Um, one, uh, if you want to get on the show, it is best to sign up for my text community where we're sending out all sorts of stuff. If you're watching right now in the US and Canada, please hit up 212-931-5731. Um, if you send in your question with hashtag T with Gary V, but all of you should be signing up for this anyway. Um, that's big. So for everybody that's new today, um, Dan, Bluebird, actually everyone in the comments, put it, reply right now with the number of days you've been watching this. Obviously some it's been going on for about a month or so. So some of you may not recall. Um, it's going on for longer than a month. How long have we been doing this? March 23rd. Mm -hmm. First day. Re reply with uh, how many days you've been watching. Because I saw, yeah, Eddie, Eddie Claros, one day. Love that. Darnell, day two. COVID-19 Philly with a bag. 23 days. I appreciate that. <laughs> Real Chef Mikey. I've watched for the last three weeks, texted 90 times. Mikey, we're trying, bro. <laughs> we really are trying. The other way to get your question on is to use the hashtag T with Gary B uh, in Twitter for all the international people. Dustin, tell the team we want some international love tomorrow. International. Um, and for everybody who's watching right now, screenshoot this, share it on Twitter. Gary B E E is my handle there. Always gives you a better chance of catching our attention when you screenshoot the show. Um, that's what that's what's going on. Good show today, Dust. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved the uh, the florist one. That idea. Yeah, Dust. You have the luxury of now being around me. Like the ability for me to go into idea phase is so heavy. We need to do a little bit. Yeah, you know, I wonder if I should do a whole show just on like rapid fire. Tell me the business. Tell me what you want to happen. Because that's what you know. The you know my two core strengths are mindset you know, just optimism, positivity, practicality, like everything in the brain. But then I also have like actual business strategies, which, you know, tend to come out less because of the nature of the format, which is why I always tell people, watch what I do, not what I say. It's very easy for me to give the 40 pieces of content advice, you know? So anyway, what else does, you had a good weekend? Yeah. Uh, you good? just worked <laughs> and then oh i did a couple people have been hitting up me up to do their podcast so i've been doing that for them too i love that that was cool i'm sure you're busy as shit with that <laughs> um come in hope you have a good weekend all right everybody thank you so much for uh good YouTube. week excuse me um everybody thank you from so much for watching we'll be back tomorrow i'm really looking forward to it please share the show i feel like a lot of people could get a lot of value from this uh notice in the comments a lot of people talking about Thank you, Scott Jansen, first time watching. Jennifer Dalton, thank you so much. Um, I think uh, I think a lot of people are getting value from this and I think a lot of people don't know about it. I think a lot of people in your community don't know about it. I think a lot of people in your community don't necessarily love me because I'm too aggressive in a single video that they saw on Instagram or said something about college and that got their feelings hurt. But um, I would love if you can share this screenshot. Facebook groups, Facebook, your email lists, your social media would mean the world to me. Um, going to do uh, a really fun campaign tomorrow where if people, yes, Dustin. Um, since we're not, since all you're all in challenges over, I'm not, should I not play that video? And I don't know. If yeah. Don't play the video. It's over. Okay. Yeah. I think we announced the winner today. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> it should be really cool. I can't wait to see who won. Somebody paid 10 bucks for all that. <laughs> Dustin, $10. That'd be crazy. I think we raised almost a half a million dollars. It's amazing. In a really short time. Yeah, it's really cool. How much uh how much is the all in challenge up to come at at its let's see where all in challenge is? We have raised thirty one million dollars. It's crazy. Um I appreciate all of you so much. Um appreciate all the support. Uh, and uh, thank you, Jai. The Flores idea was a good one. Thank you for donating to the All In Challenge, everybody. Um, and thank you, everybody who signed up for Wine Text. I'm really excited about it. I'm really enjoying it. Today's uh, today's um, today's offer is really gangster, like legit, legit shit. So thank you so much. And uh, we will talk to you soon. If you signed up for Wine Text right now, I've got like two minutes before my next meeting. Hit me up with the confirmation screen on Twitter. I'd like to follow and retweet you. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.